So we all gathered here tonight to help welcome our newest members to the Brewer Act Club at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Uh, so when I say newest members, I'm actually talking about every member in our group. Because as you might know, we actually just started this semester. And we've made so much progress over the past few months. I'm just so impressed with how much we've got done, how much we've achieved. Um, we grew so much, uh, physically and mentally and personally. So I'm really proud and I'm very confident in our abilities, our direction, and our motivation for this year. Um, so that being said, I really personally believe that we're capable of such great things. Um, such Our perseverance will carry us to these great things. So these great things will lead to change, change in the world, change in our communities, um, both locally and globally. So any change starts with um, motivation, inspiration. Just a small bit of inspiration can change the entire world. So tonight, I think the best way to start off is a small um, inspirational message given by one of our members, Nathan Duffs. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nathan Duffs. I'm a uh, junior WPI. I'm major in mechanical engineering. And um, I will talk to you about, uh, I will bring to you the thought of the day. So this thought is based on a video that I saw recently um, online, and it's about space. It, it demonstrates the sheer scale and size of the universe. Um, it shows our planets compared with other planets and stars, and uh, the immensity of it is quite remarkable. And to me, it's, it, it gets to a level where it's rather incomprehensible. So um, I'm going to go ahead and play that video. So the vast scale reminded me about a quote that I had recently seen or uh, read. So indeed, the world is a very big place, and uh, there are a lot of problems in in the world. In the world, uh, however, I believe that it is not just a service, but also a duty of us, of um, privileged and educated people to help find the def defects, the deficiencies, and fill them to a sufficiency. One with two. Oh, to make the connection, <laughs> and nothing can stop a group of people with... And nothing can stop a group of people with uh, goodwill. And people goodwill, and I believe that Rorak is just a perfect example of that people with goodwill. So, thank you.
we're going to have val give a little talk about rotary. My name is Val Callahan, and I'm the district governor of District 7910. For those of you who don't know, we have 52 clubs in central Massachusetts. And as Ralph Hammond will tell you, our grants chair since 1997, our cluster 52 clubs has given over $6.5 million worth of global grants to 59 countries throughout the world, including the United States of America. And we are dedicated to doing good throughout the world and to making a change. Our theme this year is, it is better to light one candle than it is to sit and curse the darkness. So do something, as Gandhi said, do something to make a change and to make this world a better place. That's why I have brought the, the lantern and our light up rotary. That's our theme for this year, and our theme for next year will be be a gift to the world. And I think all of you rotor actors are a gift to the world, and you are our future, and we are so proud of you. I grew up in Worcester. I've always been proud of Worcester Polytechnic Institute. I know Goddard went here. He invented the rocket. You're among the most prestigious and elite, and you are going to bring your intelligence to the world and make this world a better place. And all of us in Rotary, in here in Worcester and throughout the district, are so proud of you, and we wish you Godspeed, bon voyage, wonderful, wonderful trip to Guatemala, to Sao Paulo, Brazil. We are so proud of you, and know that you go with our love and our kindest wishes for success. Thank you. of rotating meeting locations. Within five years, clubs had formed across the country from San Francisco to New York. In August 1910, Rotarians held their first convention in Chicago. The 16 clubs that existed at that time united to form the National Association of Rotary Clubs. The name changed to the International Association of Rotary Clubs the next year uh, to reflect the addition of clubs in other countries. And in 1922, the name Rotary International was adopted. By July 1925, Rotary had grown to more than 2,000 clubs and an estimated 108,000 members on six continents. Rotary's reputation attracted presidents, prime ministers, and a host of other luminaries to its ranks. As Rotary grew, members pooled their resources and used their talents to serve their communities. The organization's dedication to this ideal is best expressed in its motto, Service above self. For anyone who hasn't seen it yet, we have a beautiful banner that was printed today. Yeah. Um, featuring uh, the Rotaract logo, the WPI logo, and the motto, Service above self. So we'll be having this when we, when we do table sitting events um, and when we're out in public. Um, so. In 1932, the four-way test 
was created by Herbert J. Taylor, a businessman and member of the Rotary Club of Chicago, who served as president of Rotary International in 1954-55. After saving the company from bankruptcy, Taylor developed the test as an ethical guide to follow in all business matters. It remains an essential standard against which Rotarians measure ethical behavior. The test, which has been translated into more than 100 languages and promoted by Rotarians worldwide, asks the following questions of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? From its origins, Rotary has built a philosophy based on integrity in business and professions. Rotary clubs and individual Rotarians are committed to vocational service and high ethical standards in all their interactions. These are summed up in the object of Rotary, the core values of service, fellowship, diversity, integrity, and leadership, the four-way test, and the Rotary Code of Conduct. Rotary's commitments to service and ethics, to peace and justice, to solidarity and human rights, are reflected in the actions of its members and institutional frameworks to support positive change in the world wherever it is needed. In 2014, a group of students from the Worcester Polytechnic Institute chapter of Engineers Without Borders USA learned about Rotary and were attracted to this community of like-minded people striving to make a difference. With the help of Worcester Rotarian Carl Gomes, the Rotaract, uh, the Rotaract Club of WPI was established by Katie Piccioni, Michael Figueroa, Rita Newman, who can't be with us today, Katie Candoro, and Nathan Das. In the first few months, even before the club was officially recognized by Rotary International, the group had grown to over 15 members, held a visioning to set goals to define its mission, collaborated with Engineers Without Borders, USA, WPI, to pursue a global grant in Guatemala, and to work with sixth grade students at Tatnik Magnet School. By the time the inauguration ceremony was held today, on February 4th, 2015, the club had over 20 charter members who represented a diverse cross-section of the student body and a variety of other organizations, interests, and dreams. It is my pleasure to stand before you today and introduce a new generation of Rotaractors. I'm proud of the way this group has grown over the past few months and of the dedication, aspirations, and motivation that I see in every one of our members. We have innumerable ideas on the table, from a citywide essay contest sponsored by Rotaract, supported by additional WPI student groups, to international work in Guatemala, Haiti, and other countries, to personal and professional leadership development activities for members, and a group that will represent District 7910 at the Rotary International Convention in Sao Paulo, Brazil this summer. <laughs> Rotaractors, I welcome you as the newest members of the Rotary family, and I challenge you to continue to inspire me and to impress me to focus your visions at that point where mind becomes matter, to think with your heart and love with your thoughts, to discern, to be critical, to be accepting, to accept the truth that you can accomplish anything that is good or just or beautiful, to bring every idea to the table, to be yourself in a world that pressures you to conform. The WPI Rotaract Club is not just another student organization. It is a network of students in other student organizations who together make a team that is doing amazing things. The Rotaract Club, this Rotaract Club, is a model Rotaract Club, one that shines with the values of service above self in everything we do. I challenge every one of you to be a change agent, and I can't wait to see you change the world. Motivated, I don't know if I will. So, 
<laughs> that being said, um, so like any Rotarian organization, we had a visioning process, and the purpose of that was to develop a mission statement, a set of goals for ourselves. So um, with that, I'd like to have Valentina kind of recite our mission statement and tell you how we developed this. And with Katie's help, uh, we wrote it out down on an official mission statement I'm going to read to you right now, and I hope you all like it. It goes like this. The WPI Rotary Club is ready to take action to make the world a better place, both in our home community and internationally. We work to have a long-lasting positive impact and to share knowledge and to challenge geographic boundaries. As we inspire leaders among our members and younger generations, we unite people of diverse backgrounds, skill sets, and interests who are welcoming, non-judgmental, and open-minded. The WPI Rotary Club is a model club for young people, showing the values of Rotary in our lives and actions. So that is our, our mission statement, our goals, what we hope to achieve, um, how we wish to live our lives as Rotarians. So now I'd like to share um, thoughts from Carol to me and have her introduce our inauguration ceremony. Thank you. What a hard act to follow. Wow! I'm proud of you all too. Um, when I was district governor, Every, every governor gets a theme. When I was Mr. Governor, our theme was the future of Rotary is in your hands. And somehow I feel like that means I should be here. That means I should be helping the new generations where we had that special meeting where you were a big part of it. And it makes me proud to see the next generation because we are being replaced. That's the way the world works really an exciting time to be a Rotor actor. Meanwhile, while you're forming this club, Rotary International has all kinds of people there working to, de to develop tools to help you. They're great for having books, and they have everything written down everywhere. Fortunately, they're not spending as much money on printing anymore, but if you have nothing to do someday, you can print out the Rotor Act book and it tells you everything you need to know about being a rotor actor. <coughs> There's lots of tools that Rotary International gives you. Another one is the presidential citation, which, like Rotary Clubs, there's a Rotor Act Club one, and I looked at it, and I would be shocked if you did not receive it. You have done just about everything that is necessary to get it done. So there's lots of tools. I do want to mention one other tool that uh, I'd love to see three or four people here apply for, and that's the Rotary Peace Scholarship. There is a scholarship that's funded by our foundation. There are seven, Ralph can correct me if I'm incorrect, uh, seven colleges throughout the world who will accept these Rotary Peace Scholars. They have a long-term one, which is a $50,000 scholarship. You have, it's post-grad, so it has to be after you graduate from here. But there's also some short-term ones. Short-term ones may be as short as three months. And those uh, are often attended by police officers and people who are trying to do good things. So I want you to remember that. And I want you also to remember that the convention is a tool. The convention is something that houses maybe 30 to 40,000 Rotarians each year. It's done in different countries. Uh, you're talking about going to Sao Paulo. After that is South Korea. In 17, it's Savannah. In 18, it's Toronto. Thank you. And 19 has not been decided on. And 20 is Honolulu. So there's lots of places to go. And one of the advantages of going when you go to a Rotary Convention is you're visiting a city that you might not have visited else otherwise. 
But you're in a cocoon. You're among other Rotarians. If something happens and you, you need help, you've got people around you. One of the wonderful things that I love about convention is when you go to get something to eat. It's much like a, mo uh, a mall. You go get something. You get some other kind of food. You get some other kind of food, but we all sit around the table. And if you're by yourself, you're never by yourself. Never. You sit at a table, and other people are sitting there too. And I don't know if you do this at your cafeteria, but we all just sit down. May I do Is anybody sitting in the seat? Oh, no? May I join you? And then you introduce yourself. Oh, you're from Georgia. You're from uh, Africa. You're from Brazil. And you find out that maybe there's six countries represented at the table that you're sitting at lunch. What a wonderful opportunity. They have fantastic speakers in the morning and breakout sessions in the afternoon, of which Katie is going to be running one and I'm going to be running one. So I hope that people who are able to go will be able to support Katie. And hopefully we're not at the same time. I tried to look at that. <laughs> better not. <laughs> because I want to be at yours. <laughs> so um, I, I have to tell you the story. I, I was at a funeral today, and the, it was a, a, a lady that I knew fairly well, but I knew her sister much, much more. And as I sat and listened about her, I thought of you. Now you may say, why would you be thinking about rotor actors in the middle of a funeral? But this girl was 54 years old. She was really a woman, I guess. And she had traveled all over the world. She had been to maybe 25 countries. She'd been in the Navy for four years. She'd attended college. She'd done tons of things. But what she was most proud of was the 501c3 that she had just completed a few months before she died. She wanted to do good in the world. So in her obit, it never spoke of the travels that she had done. It never spoke about the job she had done, and she was a great artist. It never spoke about those talents. What it spoke about was what she had done in setting up that 501c3. Because she wanted to be known for having done good in the world. I wanted to tell you one more thing. Pardon me, I have my little tools over here. making goals for yourself. Just like if you were running a business, you need to set up a plan for your life. And you set up a goal. That doesn't mean you can't change it later on. But you need to set goals. You need to dream. You need to love what you do and do what you love. Successful people, those who seize their dream, love what they do and what they love. They allow their passion and talent to guide them, because talent, purpose, and potential always come hand in hand. I don't believe that God makes mistakes. He doesn't create people to be talented in one area, but interested in an unrelated one. There is always a potential alignment of talent and passion if we have the courage to pursue our purpose and take risks. I want to end with um, my three little girls. These are three little girls. You can see that they dressed a little bit. Now, you, they were all born on the same day. Now, you might think they were triplets, but they're not. They were born on the same day, and they have different names. They were born in different countries. This one is Susan. She was born in Atlanta, Georgia. She has blue eyes, and she looks forward to a great, great life. She has plenty to eat, plenty to drink. She's well taken care of. Her parents will send her to college, and she's going to have a great life. This one was not as lucky. She was born in India, in a small rural area where there's not enough water to drink. 
Her mother gets up in the morning and walks for miles to get water. And as you know, when the mother is walking miles each day, two or three times a day to get water, she has very little time left over to spend with her child. This little girl will not have enough to eat tonight. She has no hope of going to college. Her life will be very different from the first. But this one was born in Guatemala. And even though her mother didn't had to walk for water when she was first born, she now doesn't have to walk for water because a Rotaract club in Worcester developed a plan so that her mother wouldn't have to walk for water miles each day. She will have something to drink. She will have time with her mother. She will have something to eat tonight. And it's all because of you. Thank you for what you do. And public relations is important 
because people need to know what we're doing, it becomes a circle. Because if people know what you're doing, they want to join. They want to help financially. So all three are important. And I hope that you will participate in all of that. Um, I'm trying to think of what else hasn't been said. We've done a good job covering just about all the topics. President, is there anything you would like me to cover before we give out the certificates? All right. Um, also, Carol, we have some pins. Okay. Well, the, the, the decision was made. Oh, I have some books. That should be valid. Anyone who's interested in this convention, you sort of pass it around. Take one. Do not approve. And you know, the whole thing is if you don't go to this convention, don't feel bad. There's one every year, and we'll help you go to a different one. Thanks. Um, Katie, you have been chosen to membership in the Rotary Club of Worcester Polytech. Is that how you say it? Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Polytech Institute. Because you, you are a leader in your vocation, and because you manifest those qualities of head and heart, which fit you to interpret and impart the message of Rotary to those with whom you come in contact. You are the representative of your vocation in this club, and any contribution of an educational value pertaining to us through you. On the other hand, you become an ambassador, and it is your duty to carry out the ideals and principles of service to your work. I give you the certificate, and actually, I'm not supposed to give the certificate. You give the certificate. Um, I'm supposed to give out the certificates, and that, that way we can do the pictures a little quicker. Because um, Carl, who is responsible for the club, and Val, who is the district governor, um, will be in the photo-ups. Where do you want them, photographer? Would you put them down? Yeah, how about we stand back? Three, one, two, three. And one more. One, two, three.
certificate for Meg, and I'm not sure why, but Meg Cantwell is also one of our members. Oh, well, let's take a picture with her holding a certificate. Yes, hold Come on. Okay. Come on up. Do that. Do that. <laughs> Michael, you don't mind lending your certificate out? <laughs> <laughs> and I have a pin for you. Yeah, okay. That Close works. Enough. That works. There you go. This is just our day. Perfect. Michael, May, they both name. begin with that. <laughs> we'll Photoshop your name. It's okay. He'll <laughs> stand far away. All right. You know, you can't read. <laughs> did we forget? Did we leave anybody else? Everybody's taken care of, right? All right, now, congratulate yourself.
paint, folks. Make it a little tighter. Bring it down lower on your right a little. There you go. Okay, folks. Lower on your right. Three. One, two, three. And one more. One, two, three. Thank you. inauguration ceremony. Um, I think this went fantastic. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight. Um, it's really about the members, and this is important. I mean, this is it's personal for all of us. So thank you all for coming. Um, this next hour will be for socializing if you want to stay. But before you leave, um, please sign the guest book that um, Nithin has so uh, before you can sign that. And thank you all for coming. That's going to be in the back. So thank you. Thank you.